What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Cam ATL. Shout out to the DFS squad. Shout out to everybody who's watching the video right now. Like the video down below because I already know you're going to love it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now, both of my regular lineups are looking good, especially one of them. Um, it was looking kind of mediocre. It was looking like it was going to be a eh, mediocre night. Um, and then, boom, my Arizona stack started and bang, all of my points started just flowing in. So I'm at like 76 with, I believe, a little over 50 player minutes remaining. I've still got uh, Alex Wood pitching right now and my, my Arizona stack going, and they're still in the first. So it's looking like it's going to be a great night as of the moment I'm recording this right now. My arcade mode lineup didn't work, and I'm going to explain what I think it might have been. So with arcade mode, I honestly believe that with arcade mode, the best way to success is to go cheaper at pitcher and really get in the batters you want. I think with arcade mode, the batters matter a lot more um, in arcade mode than they matter as much in the regulars. Okay, and the reason I'm saying that is because batters get so many extra points for so many different things. All right, so if I, instead of going, see, I ended up going Severino at my, as my pitcher. All right, instead of going Severino, if I would have gone a couple thousand cheaper and gone a little sleeper pitcher that I liked in a good position, I could have ended up paying higher for my batters. But instead, I ended up going Severino, and for the first time, I went two real cheap batters. Now, these other successful arcade mode lineups that I've had, which I've gone on an arcade mode streak since it started, except today is when that ends, okay? And it's because I ended up going two cheap guys in Avila for Detroit and Collins, okay? I matched up Collins and Avila in my uh, arcade mode lineup when really I should have paid down at my pitcher and paid up there for more secure batters, okay? I mean, I really screwed up with that situation. I shouldn't have gone that way, and hey, you live and you learn. It's a new thing. You know, we got we to gotta learn from it. So I should have known that I should have taken what I had been doing on my arcade mode lineups and just rolled with that because obviously it was working. I wanted to try something different and pay up at my pitcher this time and go a little cheaper at my batters, and it didn't work out. So I honestly believe, unless you strike gold and your cheap guy goes for 60+, plus, I honestly believe you need to pay down for pitcher in arcade mode and really get the batters you really want, which is what I'm going to go back to um, tonight in tonight's slate. I'm recording this right now on Friday night, but I mean Saturday night right now. You guys, most of you will be watching this on Saturday, so I'm talking about Saturday night if I say tonight, all right? Now, let's get straight into MBA. As I said in the last video, guys, DraftKings sent me an email saying they do not want me filling in entire lineups anymore in my videos. Um, and so, yeah, they pretty much were just like, don't do it anymore or we will suspend your account. So I will not be uh, putting in entire lineups in here for you guys. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be filling in entirely. I'm going to be going back to my old ways and doing my high five for you guys for the NBA and then as well as uh, MLB, obviously. All right. Now to start my high five for this NBA, I'm going with Stephen Curry. He's the last couple games against San Antonio. He has been absolutely great. He has been playing amazing. He's been averaging about 60 a game. In the playoffs, he's been doing very, very well. So I've got to lock him in at 9,100. I absolutely love the upside and the safety that you get with Curry. At the shooting guard position, Avery Bradley. Now, Cleveland is putting an absolute stomping on Boston tonight. All right? Now, no matter how mad Boston might be, and they want to come in and really show something, with Cleveland being in the mode that they're in right now, I, it's, it's hard for me to feel like that's really going to matter. I mean, Cleveland could quite possibly sweep this series, okay? Very easily, all right? But Boston getting embarrassed like this is definitely going to have the players playing harder. So that means, hey, Avery, guys like Avery Bradley, Isaiah Thomas could possibly be out, so watch for that. He left early in the game Friday night. All right, so watch for that because if he's out, Rozier is going to be great value. So Rozier for sure if he ends up being out. But Avery Bradley, 
especially if Isaiah, Tom Isaiah Thomas is out, and even if he is in. I love Avery Bradley to come in and really put up a bunch of shots. Cleveland has struggled against shooting guards this year, so it's a good position for Avery Bradley. And he's a good price at 5900 for his potential that he could put up. All right? At small forward, I'm staying with that and going Jay Crowder. Okay? This is another guy. Like I said, I think Boston comes in and really plays hard. I don't think it matters on the scoreboard because I do think Cleveland wins this game. But... After being embarrassed like this, you've got to expect them to come in with more energy next game and really want to, like, get some of their fucking pride back because it was very embarrassing. Cleveland is absolutely embarrassing them. It's, it's like Cleveland's playing a fucking middle school team. That's how off-balanced it is. It's not even fair at all. Part of it could be because Isaiah's out, but even if Isaiah was in, Cleveland would still be stomping them. They're just in a whole nother zone right now, especially at home in Cleveland. So, Jay Crowder, guys, is 6,100, is in the high five. At the power forward position, this guy has made an appearance in my lineups a bunch of times, but LaMarcus Aldridge, man, I mean, it's a good matchup for him. Um, he can stay outside and shoot. He shoots well. He's good down low. He's going to get some rebounds, and he has historically done well against Golden State. So I absolutely love LaMarcus Aldridge at 76, and I have decided that every, I'm in my head, I'm, I'm feeling like everybody's going to be going LeBron James, especially after how bad Cleveland is beating Boston right now. I just, I expect a lot of people to go LeBron James. So if you want to be contrarian, I do ex, uh, think that you should go elsewhere. All right, if you're in a GPP, I do believe that, hey, you, if you can find that team to work with without LeBron in your lineup, it could really give you an edge because LeBron is going to be very highly owned um, going into tonight, all right? Now, last but not least, Kyrie Irving. It's a mismatch here, man. Kyrie Irving going against whoever. I mean, if Isaiah Thomas isn't a good defender. Terry Rozier is not a good defender. It doesn't matter. Kyrie Irving is a very big mismatch, and if I'm not going to be playing LeBron James, I want some exposure to Kyrie Irving. We all know this guy can really flip a switch and turn it on to a whole nother level. Cleveland seems to be clicking on all cylinders right now. I absolutely love Kyrie Irving. And there it is, guys. Stephen Curry, Avery Bradley, Jay Crowder, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Kyrie Irving is my high five. Remember to keep updated with the Isaiah Thomas uh, news because if Isaiah Thomas is out, Rogier is going to be a great play, all right? Either Rogier or they might end up putting Marcus Smart at the point guard position. So just keep an eye on that. See how that works out. Regardless, definitely catch value if Isaiah ends up sitting out. He's got a hip strain. So if Isaiah does end up missing this next game, make sure you find value there. All right, guys? And that's it, man. Good luck, everybody. I hope you kill NBA. If you have any questions about it at all, hit me up on Twitter at Cam underscore ATL. Now let's get straight to the MLB. I've got a fire high five that I'm loving. So let's get it. All right, guys. Here we go. We do have an early slate. I will be playing all slates. So if you guys need help or anything from me for any of the slates, hit me up on Twitter at Cam underscore ATL. And I've got you, all right? If you want to join the team, go to greenlightdfs.com and get with it, all right? Now, starting at my first pitcher, I've got to go with Robbie Ray. San Diego's been giving a lot of points to pitchers, all right? Robbie Ray has got some good stuff, okay? And I absolutely love the fact that he's going to San Diego, which is very pitcher-friendly stadium, all right? It's a very pitcher-friendly park, so... I love Robbie right here in this situation. I also definitely expect Arizona to give him run support. They have been hitting very, very well as of right now as well. Um, they're just totally carrying my team to victory right now. It's ridiculous. But yeah, man, definitely I love Robbie Ray. Lock him in at 8,900. Next picture that I'm going with, man, I, I really want to get the batters that I want, so I'm going to go down here. Carlos Martinez doesn't really excite me. Okay, doesn't really excite me. If it was in San Francisco, I would consider it because it's a very pitcher friendly park. All right, but Carlos Martinez does not really excite me for 11,000. 
I'm just not interested. Justin Verlander hasn't really been that super amazing shutdown pitcher he used to be. He's been giving up some stuff, so I'm definitely not paying 10-5 for him either. I like Zach Wheeler going against the Angels. The only batter on the Angels to fear is Mike Trout. All right? If Wheeler can handle those other guys well, he will have a very solid outing. He's had some very solid outings uh, throughout this year. He's been very, very fairly consistent. Um, he averages about 15 to 20, right under 20, as you see, 19.9. He didn't quite hit 20, but he does get close. At home, traveling to Arizona in a very hitter-friendly park, he put up 18.7 against a very good hitting team. Going against the Angels, who really has not been hitting the ball well, other than Mike Trout. Uh, Cameron Mabin has been really stepping it up. He's been hitting very, very well. But honestly, Zach Wheeler should have a very solid night here. I'm expecting 15-plus out of him. And our batters are going to be able to, we're going to be able to do really what we want with our batters and have a pitcher like Robbie Ray that we know could get us 25-plus. All right? When he has a solid outing, he can get us 25-plus. So I love Zach Wheeler, and I am locking Wheeler in. There's not really, with that said, these two guys, I like these guys, they're solid. But there's really no pitchers on this slate, just like the other day when we had that situation where there were no pitchers that excite us. I'm, I, none of these pitchers really excite me. I'm not, I don't lock any of these pitchers in and think, oh my God, I'm super hype about it. No, I mean, I just, I, I find where I can, that who I feel is going to be safe and solid, and then I lock them in. And you got to be like that sometimes. You got to do that. There's nobody on this slate that really blows my mind. So, yeah, I'm definitely wanting to make sure I get the batters that I want, and I'll take chances at pitchers. Um, not really take chances, but just not pay up super high for a pitcher. All right? Now, first batter that I want to go with, is my main man, Nelson Cruz. His bat has been on fire lately. We all know this guy's that type of guy that can get you a double dong, all right? All right, no homo. He can get you a double dong, all right? Real big ones, okay? Two in a row. <laughs> okay, all right, this is getting too far. But he can hit you two home runs in one game. We all know he's got that type of upside. And I absolutely love stacking Seattle against Pelfrey. I absolutely love it, man. This guy is a guy you love to pick on, and I absolutely love it, especially with Seattle at home in Seattle, which is why I'm also going Segura, all right? I absolutely love him, man, because just like Cruz, his bat has been on, okay? He, is, he can also hit you a home run easily, all right? Segura is in a perfect situation against Pelfrey. I absolutely love putting these two guys together, so I have to put them in the high five together. These two guys were like my immediate, le immediate locks when I was looking at batting. I was like, oh yeah, I love these dudes. I'm definitely going to end up being heavy on Seattle here. Um, so yeah. Now, next up, at first base, Justin Smoke. I absolutely love Justin Smoke. His bat has been absolutely phenomenal lately. He's been very, very solid ever since the 14th, 21, 27, 10, 16. He's been fairly, fairly consistent, and this guy's got a lot of power. He's been hitting good home runs, all right? He's going against Guzman, who is definitely a guy that I do not scare, does not scare me at all. I'm willing to pick on him. I love Smoke here. Justin Smoke at 4,500, locked in at first base. And that's it, guys. That's it. So it's Robbie Ray, Zach Wheeler, Justin Smoke, Segura, and Cruz. That is my high five for MLB, guys. Now you know what time it is. Get your pens out. Get your pencils out. And write these names down because all of these guys have done well against the pitchers they are facing. It is the batter's box. All of these batters have good histories against these pitchers they're facing, guys. So take these guys down. All right? Now, I am going to say all of the batters from the entire day, okay? I'm not just going to pick out the main slate. All of these batters have done well, and they're all throughout the whole entire day, okay? Now, Ben Zobrist, Hernan Perez... We got Tyler Flowers, Edwin Encarnacion, Jose Ramirez, Starlene Castro, Brett Gardner, Chase Headley, Aaron Hicks, Aaron Judge. The Yankees have destroyed Matt Andrews. 
absolutely destroyed him. Corey Dickerson, Kevin Kiermeyer, Bryce Harper, Anthony Rendon, Miguel Cabrera. He won't be back probably, but he has done very well. J.D. Martinez has been decent. I mean, he's been uh, he's been decent, all right? In the way he's been batting lately, I love him. But throughout his career, he hasn't been amazing against A.J. Griffin. He's gotten 3 of 11 for a home run and a 273. But the way he's been batting, I don't think that really matters. He's been fairly solid against him, and he's been going crazy. So I do like J.D. Martinez. Dexter Fowler, Yadir Molina. Colton Wong has been good in a good spot in that lineup, okay? If he bats second or even up there at the first spot, I absolutely love Colton Wong batting at the top of the order, going against Samarja. He's gone 3 of 8 for a 375, and he has not struck an out at all against him. So I absolutely love Colton Wong, all right? Now, you got Paul Goldschmidt, Jake Lamb, Jose Abreu, Franklin Gutierrez is going to be some good value if you want him, and Kyle Seeger, guys. And that's it. That is it. Now, I've got a few pitchers that have done... Well, I've got one pitcher that I love other than the guys I talked about, all right? The one pitcher that I love, and I know this might sound crazy, but A.J. Griffin. We were just talking about him, okay? We were just talking about him with our boy, J.D., all right? But here's the deal. Miguel Cabrera has been the lone Detroit Tiger who has absolutely dominated Griffin. All right, Miguel most likely will not be in the lineup. Okay, JD, yes, he has been hitting very well, and Detroit normally isn't a team you really want to pick on. But Griffin has had some very solid games this year. I believe he's got over 30 in three games this year. All right, maybe two games, and then one was close. All right, but he's been fairly solid. He has had some games where he totally imploded, and it was horrible. But A.J. Griffin could be some very good value, especially in tournaments. If you guys want to run him up, I definitely don't fault you on that. Because if he ends up getting you those 30 points, you are sitting pretty. I know it's scary, but you are definitely sitting pretty if you play Griffin and he ends up getting that 25-plus points at his price tag. All right? And that's it, guys. Good luck, everybody. I hope everybody kills it. Hit me up on Twitter at Cam underscore ATL. Once again, you can join the squad, join the team that is dominating the game at greenlightdfs.com. Let's get it. I will not be doing a blog on the website, guys, because it is the weekend. I will be busy in the morning and as of right now, as soon as I get off of recording this video. But I hope everybody fucking kills it. You guys hit me up and let me know how you guys do, all right? Like the video down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'm out.